Can you mute the? Figure out how to mute this. Hello. Take the trash, you know. Uh, is there, is there sure. You know, I do wonder if I logged in, if it would be better. Um. Yeah, I think I'm going to stream more, but the stream's going to be a whole lot more chill uh, than yesterday's stream. We'll see if you really like it. Um, my mother sent me an article this morning about masks. And the article's totally complete trash. And you know what? I regret talking about masks. Even this stuff, even this, like, anti-Google the, the problem with even talking about it, it is, is it attracts idiots. Whenever, whenever, um, this is a good article for everybody to read. Uh, and this is, this is, uh, really how how people view it Politics is an extension of war by other means arguments are soldiers once you know which side you're on You must support all arguments of that side and attack all arguments that appear to favor the enemy side Otherwise, it's like stabbing your soldiers in the back providing aid and comfort to the enemy People who would be level-headed about even-handedly weighing all sides of an issue in their professional life as scientists suddenly turn into slogan-chanting zombies when there's a blue or green position on an issue. Right? Um, the general level of uh, discourse about this kind of stuff is so much lower so that's why we're working on the busy beaver problem today. And I was like, should I stream this or should I not stream this? You know, I regret doing any streams that ever uh, talk about anything remotely controversial. Because honestly, the internet's a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of immature fucks. Um, I'm not talking specifically about my audience. But the, the internet, for the most part, is, 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 is immature fucks. And, you know, you guys don't know how to handle, um, like intellectual um, and I, I do think uh, I'll make this one point I think it has to do uh, I'm so sad for the internet that we lost um, I'm so sad for the internet 20 years ago um, the internet that I grew up with where it wasn't like this and I do think it was because well the people on the internet were uh, more mature let's say that All right, um, so we'll do some quick intro. Uh, the Busy Beaver game consists of designing a halting binary alphabet Turing machine. So not all Turing machines halt, some halt and some don't. Um, you can't know which ones. Uh, you can know for some. 
Um, to prove that a halting tiring machine halts, you can just run it and figure out until it halts. Um, to prove a non-halting tiring machine uh, does not halt, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, so the easiest way is if you get a cycle. Um, so you can think of a, a sigma, you know, a sigma, a lowercase sigma, but now turn it around, right? If you're turning, 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 you go in a turning loop and then you uh, reach a state that you've been in before, let's say at state 100 is a repeat of state 30. Well, the same thing's going to happen again. At state 170, you're going to get a repeat of, of state 100, which is state 30, so on and so forth. So that has a, uh, I mean, y intercept and slope aren't really the right things, but it has a intro of, uh, of, of, of 30 and then like a step of 70. Uh, so what does halting mean? Um, so halting uh, in a Turing machine is usually just a state. That state's called the halt state. Uh, you can make more generic statements, like you can't prove if a Turing machine ever gets into a certain state. So maybe a way to talk about this is going to be to look at, uh, do they have a bunch of what are those nice little pictures here? They have little graphs. These, yeah. Yeah, so this is like, um, this, this represents uh, a Turing machine. Uh, so if you're in state A, and you come upon a, uh, hmm. I don't exactly, their, their notation's a little bit different from mine, so I don't exactly understand it. Um, but Z is the halt state, right? So the Turing machine bounces around states, like A to B, back to A, to B, to D, back to B, back to A, and then maybe it makes this transition here over to Z. Uh, so yeah, that's what halting means. Running my own private Wikipedia instance. It's never gonna, my Wikipedia. Imagine your computer hit you up and was like, yo, could you give me $3? Yo, you got $3? It's like, it's like, you know, I go out in the street, the homeless people, give me $3. I go on Wikipedia, give me $3. Um, if it goes to Z, then it terminates, yeah. Uh, the rules for the two-state game are as follows. So it's a, it's a two-state. Uh, wait. No, 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 not two-state. So it's a binary alphabet. So all it has is, is zeros and ones. Um, there's two ways I've heard it talked about. You can say, what is the machine that runs for the longest without halting? And then what is the machine that writes the most number of ones on the tape? Um, so a few cute things. Um, it, it's really easy to show that the, uh, the busy beaver function is non-computable. Um, I'm not sure this is the proof that they're going to go into, but my understanding of the simplest proof is then, well, if you knew the busy beaver number, say for uh, a 13-state Turing machine, and you had an arbitrary 13-state Turing machine, and you wanted to know whether it was going to halt or not, well, you could just simulate it for the busy beaver function's number of steps, and then if it didn't halt, it'll never halt, right? Um, busy beavers are totally and completely useless, and if you're looking for useful shit, fuck off. From now on, this stream is a useless stream that talks about nothing controversial except for finitism. Uh, this is this was a really cool. I was super impressed when I saw this. Um, you gotta you gotta be you gotta be careful what links you click these days. No, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. Um, this is. See, I I want now. I know Scott Aronson, let's try Scott Aronson, 
blog this. I want that. I want, no, I want the blog post. Turing machine uh, ZF independent. Ah, yes. So, this is a, a, a really cool theory about, so the busy beaver number is theoretically incomputable, right? Like you can't, there's no function that's going to return the busy beaver for n, but it seems like we can get some of them, right? Uh, we know the, the number for two, three, and four. Um, what we're gonna work on today is the number for five, which the number for five we have a good lower bound on. Um, it's easy to get a lower bound. If you, as soon as you find a machine with that number of states that halts, um, either after running for this many steps or printing this many ones, uh, you have a lower bound. And if we happen to magically find one that runs for more steps or prints more ones, we can update these numbers. But I don't think that we're going to. So this is talking about the busy beaver number from the other bound, which says that the what busy beaver number can't we compute? Um, and there's some things in. Uh, yeah, it follows as an immediate consequence of Gödel's incompleteness theorem that there's some computer program of some length that eludes the power of ordinary mathematics to prove what it does. Um, yeah, so the, oh, that's, this, is, this is a cute, simple one. Uh, enumerate all the possible consequences of the ZFC axioms. You can enumerate those. There's a set of axioms. You can apply them. Um, and halt if it ever found a contradiction. Um, assuming ZFC is consistent, this program must run forever. But then again, assuming it's consistent, it can't prove that the program runs forever. Since if it did, then it would prove its own consistency, thereby violating the second incompleteness theorem. So, if you could encode that axiom enumerator in a Turing machine, figure out how many states that Turing machine has, you know that busy beaver number is, is incomputable. You can't know. This, this is a program in math that you can prove that you can never prove. Uh, and as, as fun little asides, um, they also made a uh, 4888 state Turing machine that halts if there's a counterexample to Goldbox conjecture. Um, you all know Goldbox conjecture. Uh, Goldbox conjecture says uh, every number is the sum of two primes, um, except two. I think that's right. And that's what I'm not getting it mixed up with something else. But um, yeah, every every integer great every even integer greater than two can be expressed as the sum of two primes. If you take four, it's two plus two. If you take six, it's three plus three. Eight is three plus five. So on and so forth. Um, and a 5372 uh, state machine that halts if and only if there's a counterexample to the Riemann hypothesis. Uh, the Riemann hypothesis uh, explanation is too short to fit in this stream, but it says some weird stuff about uh, zeta functions and all that stuff. And I don't know. Someone just has to do with primes. That I read this proof. I read this book. Um, yeah, well, no, I think he had a, it was, it was the same guy. I think, I think, yeah, I think this was the book I read. Um, or maybe it was a, it, it went into trying to explain the Riemann hypothesis. And I, I really tried to go through it and I would still love to, uh, sit down with someone who can actually explain to me what the Riemann hypothesis is in a way that I understand. So 
So this was uh, this was done two years ago. Like, it was so cool. Like I could have done it, you know. Uh, so it's just it gives you hope that math is accessible uh, to 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 hackers because it's 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 certain it's it's real it's real hacker stuff. Um, let's uh, let's get his name right. Um, Adam. I'm not even going to try with the last name. Uh, but he wrote basically a Turing machine compiler that makes small Turing machines for this uh, yeah, laconic. That's it's a cute language. Uh, and then this language compiles to small Turing machines. It has like an unpacker. It's it's, it's like writing uh, it's like writing shell code. So let's work through this paper. Um, well, so here, here's my notes. Uh, they're public as part of the Twitchcock repository uh, on my GitHub. So if you're naively talking about the five state uh, Turing machine, you're talking about how many, well, let's, let's go through what they're, um, no. This is the notation uh, that's being used on this uh, skelet page. Um, this page is from 2003. And let's look into who this guy is. He seemed, he seemed to come pretty close to, uh, to proving it. And this was 2003, so I don't really know why he gave up. Um, Codes in Pascal. And there's a Yahoo email. I mean, I guess that's what you had in 2003. Dude, like some, some anonymous person came and just did this. Cool. Uh, so this is the notation that he uses to represent the uh, programs, the Turing machine programs, the state is implied, the, the state is implied. So this is for state, this is like a zero, a one, meaning it's a if um, you're in state a and zero if what's read on the tape is, uh, is zero. Uh, so then this says transition to state C, write a zero to the tape and then move the tape head left. So naively, um, not worrying at all about uh, deduping, we say that there are six states. Uh, one of the states is, well, there's five plus one states, because one of the states is a halt state. So you have five, the halt state. Uh, once you enter the halt state, you never leave the halt state. Just, you know, spins a little bit. Um, so you have five plus one states, six. Uh, two possible, oh, I already did deduping, I guess. Oh, no, 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 never mind. This is the five plus one states right here. So that's six, six possible values for this, two possible values for this, and two possible values for this. Uh, six times two times two is 24. Uh, there are 10 labels, 24 to the 10 is 63 trillion. Uh, so we have 63 trillion possible machines in which to find our uh, busy beaver. So, Usually whenever you're dealing with searching in a set like this, the first thing you want to say is how many of these machines are isomorphic? How many of these machines have uh, the same behavior? Like, provably the same behavior. So for example, one trivial way, we can talk about some, some symmetries. Um, one symmetry is the symmetry of the names of the states. So if I rename all the states to other things, uh, with the exception of the halt state, uh, because the halt state is special because uh, you halt, and with the exception of the A state, because I believe you start in the A state. 
then yeah, there's, a, there's still a lot of, of degrees of freedom there which I can get identical machines. Uh, also left and right, the tape of Atari machine is completely symmetric. So if I switch all the lefts uh, to rights and all the rights to lefts, it should do the same. Uh, ones and zeros would be symmetric were the goal Oh, actually, that's not true. The Atari machine starts with zeros, so ones and zeros are not symmetric. So this is a paper, Generating Candidate Busy Beaver Machines or How to Build the Zany Zoo. So if we can come up with a procedure that allows us to generate uh, candidates. Now, there's like words for this, which shows my lack of formal math, but um, if you have a function where ideally I'd like a function where I can say, okay, give me the 17 millionth candidate and it will return me something. I don't need to iterate through them. I have a explicit uh, formula. So let's read this paper. Um, I, I was sitting, I was looking at this paper this morning and I realized something kind of sad too. As the internet reduces in content, you guys watch how I use the internet. You watch how I highlight quickly and like jump around and you kind of have to because there's really very little information in most web pages. Um, but this is kind of breaking my brain for the ability to sit and read uh, something that's very informationally dense. I remember getting a copy of Critique of Pure Reason and uh, sitting in a coffee shop and trying to read it and I couldn't get past the first two pages. Tiboretto introduced the busy beaver problem as an example of a non-computable function. Surprisingly simple definition to find the largest number of non-blank characters that is output by a terminating turn machine commencing on the blank tape. The machine must be of no more than a given size so that one can define a function mapping the size of the machine to the maximum size of the output produced. Well, the size of the output can be surprisingly large. For example, there's a machine with six states that terminates after. Um, the beautiful thing about, about the five state uh, Busy Beaver is the number is believed to be like 47 million. And 47 million, we can write in Python. Uh, 10 to the 36,000, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's gonna require, that's gonna require a lot of uh, speed up tricks. You don't, you can't actually simulate every step of that, but you can talk about its behavior, what it's going to do. Um, In principle, this problem could be solved by cleverly composing a particular machine of a given size and proving that it's maximal. Uh, yeah, how do you prove that it's maximal without showing that all the other ones are? In practice, solving the problem means analyzing all the machines of a given size and determining the maximal one. Um, the evidence for maximality of such machines would be available. Oh, so he, he's complaining about the three and four state uh, machines not being rigorously done. Systematic analysis for the three state two symbol case which involves using a program. Should be able to analyze <coughs> all but 40 machines, which were then analyzed by hand. He provided a description of their method and a specification of the 40 machines, but details are not provided to reproduce what was done. Uh, which is interesting is I mean, this is the same approach taken by uh, Mr. Skelet. Um, So this is the BB Prover is open source. We can we can run it run it before. I have 
to getting Pascal to compile, uh, you can see it going through machines. Um, now, one problem uh, with potentially doing this. Um, one problem with potentially doing this for five and why perhaps it hasn't been done is you may end up with the collapse conjecture. Uh, we're going to use my local instance of Wikipedia for this because fuck the internet. Um, the collapse conjecture is a, is a conjecture in mathematics that uh, concerns the sequence to find as follows. Start with any positive integer n. Uh, then each term is obtained from the previous term as follows. If the previous term is even, the next term is one half the previous term. Uh, if the previous term is odd, the next term is three times the previous term plus one. The conjecture is that no matter the, what value of n, the sequence will always reach one. Does the collat sequence eventually reach one for all positive integer initial values? Okay, so let's 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 try one. Um, I'll I'll I'll, I'll write it out. So we're going to start with 6, we get to 3, right? Uh, 3 times 3 plus 1 is 10, we get to 5, uh, that gets us to 16, uh, right? Because 5 times 3 is, 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 is uh, 15 plus 1, uh, 16 divided by 2 because it's even is 8, 4, 2, and then 1. So 6 works. Uh, is that true for all numbers? Now, the problem with the Kolhatsky conjecture is the procedure is very, very simple, yet there is no proof for this yet. So if we can show, actually that would be a really cool mathematical result as well. If we could show, well, yeah, I mean, that's the old, oh, that's the old, what's, what was a Hilbert was like, uh, some, some, some mathematician was criticizing Hilbert for his like, uh, it's like Hilbert's list of unsolved problems. Oh, anyone can write a list of unsolvable problems. It's so easy. Uh, and Hilbert's like, okay, give me, give me three. And the mathematician couldn't even come up with one. Because uh, it's really hard. It's really hard to find problems that are, are hard to, to, to uh, say or not. And Busy Beaver is an interesting place to potentially look for these, right? Uh, you'll have to translate... Um, you'll have to translate this into a problem that people can care about and demonstrate to followers in Python because you know, math, math, that uh, seductive math is more likely to be solved. Um, you imagine roasting Hilbert, right? Uh, yeah, so we got distracted. We'll go back to the paper. I'd analyze all the 40 machines, which are then analyzed by hand. Um, provided analysis of the four state two symbol machines, which also used programs to reduce the unknown cases to 218 and 210. Uh, both of the times these remaining machines were determined not to terminate due to a human analysis. Oh, this is interesting. So this is basically saying that the proofs for three and four aren't even very good. We just kind of came to accept them. And the five one is probably correct as well, but we live in an era where we expect more rigor from anything that looks comp sci like We drink tea while we do math. Uh, Oh, cool. They actually said exactly what, what I said. Uh, anyone making a statement should provide a substantially higher level of computational evidence. Of course, we'll do this all open source if we, if we have any luck. Um, I was one of the, one of, one of the things that I, I never really uh, posted about anywhere that I put a surprising amount of my life into was trying to find a collision in SHA-1. 
I mean, it's been done. Uh, it's been done by uh, the leader in the, in the space. I, I read all his papers and, and tried to implement them. My implementations were never as good as his. Um, but I wanted to use, oh, I tried using SAT solvers against it. I, I still have this code somewhere. I have a SAT solver which can find like 40 step collisions in SHA-1, but I, I couldn't get it beyond 40. Um, SAT really interests me as well. Maybe we'll, did we do a stream yet where we wrote a SAT solver? Maybe we tried. We didn't actually get through it because, you know, part of the reason I was able to do Twitch Slam uh, so well is because I spent the six months before that, like studying Slam, deeply studying Slam. Um, we have an internal Slam at Comma. Uh, so when it comes to writing a toy one for Twitch, I could do it very well. And Twitch Slam looks impressive, but what you don't see is all the work that goes into it. Um, so if I do a SAT solver stream, yeah, put the work in, right? You know, in some ways, I have an expectation for wanting this stream to be high quality, but I don't put much effort into it. Um, so that's kind of on me. Like, if I want my stream to look like shit talking hour, I prepare for the stream like it's shit talking hour. So, uh, you know, we all could use a little bit more self control, especially me. prep for it and share the topping in Discord. We don't have a Discord. I wish we had nice tools, you know? I, I wish we had tools which could build nice communities on, online. Part of it. So part of it, I don't mean to just attack people and say people have done a, a bad job at this because like a lot of people, it's very hard. It's, it's not an easy problem. The only people who I would really attack are people who I think are doing it in bad faith. Uh, in the early days of the internet, PHPBB, Media Wiki, these, these projects were not written in bad faith. Um, Facebook wasn't written in bad faith. It changed over time. Um, yeah, so I mean, if we could have a nice community where you, you keep out really all the toxicity, uh, then we could have a nice Discord where we could study and prepare. This is part of the reason I wanna make the college. Um, I think maybe it's a fundamental problem with the internet. Maybe it's a fundamental problem that when you give people anonymity and weak identity, you get toxicity and psychopathic behavior. You, you get no, no, no person in real life would treat you like a SEO medium post would that only expects to ever have 30 seconds of your attention. I mean, sure, you know, a, a beggar would. Uh, at least at least beggars I can respect more because a beggar is, is putting their, their body in front of me. Right? If you make, make drive-by SEO content, it's, you put nothing. By the way, don't give me... If everybody stopped clicking those links, if everybody stopped giving beggars money, it would all go away. But, and that's the truth about solving a lot of problems too. And coordination's hard. But solving the busy beaver problem. See, that's something we can do. And it's beautiful because it's meaningless. Like the people who would appreciate it. I think I've talked about this before in order to appreciate. I think I, I, I vacillate and I, I make streams like this sometimes uh, where I get fed up with the other stuff and it goes in a cycle. And, um, reminder to future me. When you feel the other way, watch this stream. Maybe it'll work, right? Uh, just dating this girl once. Um, just 
she left a nice text message on my machine. A really nice text message. How she was sad about how she you know, acted this way and, and so on and so forth and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and then, you know, she's acting that way again and I played her the text message. Uh, it didn't work, so maybe maybe there's not really hope for 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 that. I mean, if old you can't convince new you, maybe old you is just not dynamic enough. Paper is hilarious for picking on mediocre research and rinse and repeat articles in ML. Yeah, but is that paper any better? Is that paper any better? I don't like the libs either, but owning the libs is not, uh, I don't like that either. Let's build better systems. Don't look at the comments, they're a distraction. All right. There are O of n to the n machines of size n, you know. It's true. That's you had an n on both sides of the of the uh yeah, it's 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 actually it's yeah, four n to the two n, right? Uh no, well not exactly because it's all thing. Uh four n plus one raised to the two n. But big O notations, correct? Uh, second, the process for generating machines needs to be carefully considered and based on sound principles rather than simply generating all machines of a given size. Um, oh, well, I mean, that's true, too. <coughs> if you have machines that have no connections between, uh, if some states are entirely disconnected or if you have islands, uh, this is effectively a machine of size 3 rather than size 5. Such redundancy is equivalent to be avoided if possible. Thirdly, in order to determine the busy beaver function, we need only to analyze the execution of these machines on a single input. Um, that means we could potentially exploit the property of reason that the machines need to be considered. The classic way to address these issues is to intermingle the generation of the machines with their execution. I've seen this. So I, I actually I implemented this. Uh, basically, the trick is whenever you can do a state transition, do it. You, 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 you'll And do both. You'll find the code. I, I have the code for this. Um, yeah, yeah, TNF. Oh, beautiful. Uh, so if we run TNF, I think this is going to generate. Yeah, this is all the possible um, machines with three states. And I think it eventually gives us the right answer. Yeah. So if you're interested in tree normal form, um, it's already implemented in the, in the Twitch pack repo. Get a partially defined machine on the blank input until an allocated transition, which is an appropriate suggestion of one that's allocated. Uh, if the result of the machine fails one of these checks, so it does it, it does it dynamically. But this doesn't have that property that I want. Um, I don't want a recursive definition. I want to. The word that comes to my mind is imperative, but that's not right. The TNF approach makes it attractive to use a single process to generate and analyze machines rather than separating the two as discussed above. Oh, actually, I remember also, if you want to run this shit mad fast. Yeah, pie pie. Let me see it going through them. I don't know what it was printing. Uh, so it prints the machine, it prints whether the machine halts or not. What do I do if it doesn't halt? Why do I get halt? Oh, 
Oh, I think I'm gonna leave the other machines in. What do I do? Run. Oh, this is run. I have, I have my turn machine runner over here. Um, and ms equals 100 means that I'll run it for 100 steps. And that's why I'm getting all those 101s. Cool. I'm trying to busy over two. Wow, even two takes a long time. Uh, so for two, we got six and four. Uh, all S, all sigma. Um, let's, let's just sigma and run. Yeah. So that's the count and that's the number. So six and four, I would expect to find um, as the the numbers for. Yeah. So six and four. Uh, those are for two states. So that's my middle tree normal form program. Um, Tree normal form. Tree form. So yes, this is all implemented off stream. Um, our intention is to provide a data set consisting of all machines which need to be considered for the busy beaver problem of a given size. So this the skeleton page estimates that BB Prover searches 150 million machines. So 150 million, actually, if the way that we have to do it is by generating a, uh, a big table, that's okay. Like we can, you, you can turn a recursive function into a function where I can do lookups by making a table. They're just talking about yeah, the importance of separating it into the, uh, the generation. A one-shot approach will suffice if a complete analysis procedure, which is known in advance to be capable of analyzing all machines of interest, is available. This is generally unrealistic in practice, and so it seems necessary to have an incremental development cycle uh, involving testing a partially developed technique on a class of machines. Our intention is to provide a data set consisting of all machines which need to be considered for the busy beaver problem of a given size. Uh, minimize the size of the set when possible. It's even more important to ensure we didn't exclude anything. Um, this means we generally cannot reduce the number of irrelevant machines retained for analysis to zero. If we're sure it's irrelevant, and proving it's irrelevant might be. Right, because you do actually technically need a proof for the full combinatorics uh, trillions. And so you do actually need a proof for the, the 30, the 63 trillion. Basically, yeah, what you would need to show is you'd need to show a procedure that can canonicalize any machine. So if we want like a certain ordering, yeah, right? Um, 36 trillion is, uh, 10 to the 16, that's, that's large. 63 trillion, yeah, 10 to the, yeah, actually, 10 to, almost 10 to 17. Uh, so that's, that's, that's beyond what, uh, we are going to run today. What, what is, what is 10 to the 17 in, in log? I always like thinking in twos. Uh, how do I do this? Times log 10 over log 2. Let's see the news articles that come up with the search. 56. No news articles. Uh, so yeah, 2 to the 56. So yeah, I mean, can you do 2 to the 56? Yeah, but let's try to find a better way to do it. I mean, so, so like what you could do with 2 to the 56 is you could say, you could enumerate everyone and then 
come up with just little little like a like a proof system to kind of say um, this one's equivalent to this one that's already on the list. This one's equivalent to this one that's already on the list, right? Uh, I like writing things that look like that more. Uh, in section two, we discuss related work, and in section three, we discuss preliminaries. Oh, their code is available too. Intelligence provide a data set of all the machines which needs to be considered. Clearly, it's important to minimize this. All the machines are relevant. You're going to have some that are stupid, but in there. For this reason, we need to investigate formal results which establish the correctness of constraints on the type of machines that need to be generated in order to solve the busy beaver related problems. We define what is meant by being relevant to the busy beaver problem and give results which establish a shoundish of eliminating certain cases. Yeah. We provide a procedure for generating machines. The code and the results are available on the author's website. Okay. Let's, uh, I, think, I think we understand now what it does. Um, let's take a look. By the way, it's more important now than ever to save archive.org. find myself using it more and more. Twenty-five petabytes. So for reference, comma has two petabytes. Oh, the observant otter. Let's learn about the observant otter. Why are you waving at me? No, <laughs> the demon dog of doom. So here, I think why don't they post the all numbers? There's certainly numbers we could write. Let's just download this. Wow, good thing that's on archive.org. Add it to my. I don't think they'll mind. I'll add it to my. Is there one in Pearl? God.
Dimensional license. The good news is I'm looking at this. Like aside from this one uses Perl and this one uses Pascal. Like aside from the weird choices of languages, it, it seems like this stuff's like written by hackers. I don't know. Um, so, I would assume that the six is states and the two is, um, symbols. And it's interesting that, yeah, they've gotten it to 102 million. Well, okay. So to get an idea of the size of the compute where see, oh we can do oh, this is so cool. It's so cool to like think about. We can we can well, all right, let's download the file. See if we can understand the format. Did wow. Wow, they saved in a hundred meg zip file. Oh, that was so polite of them. Oh, I love the Internet Archive. Donate to the Internet Archive. They've never harassed me for donations. See, that's why I don't know. Mm. Yeah. With, with, with the dying of the internet, you know. Cybersecurity is a racket. Yeah, I don't, I'm not donating for your clout. Uh, maybe we can just can we use their Perl code? How long does it take? This is not Perl. What is PL? Prolog? Is it Prolog? I think it's Pro. I think it is Prolog. You know what the good news is? Somebody used Prolog for merge sort. So I know how to run it. This is my little fun project where we. Oh, wow. It doesn't look like Perl. Yeah, I was thrown off by the file extension. I do think this actually is Prolog. Let's see if it looks like Prolog. Yeah, it looks like Prolog. Swipple? Generate. Mm, dash C. Get that out. 
Hmm. Prolog. Dash G main. Unknown procedure main. Oh, I get it. So you can like swip all G generate. And then when I run that, I think I had like imports though. Machines states symbols. I'll play any Dura style and types too. Ah, huh. yes, I need Durs. Gem? You know, it would be nice if they had a uh, example. Oh, here we go. Oh, DERS is directions, not a directory. Sorry, that was dumb. Um, oh, top. Oh, here we go. ABS TNF. Are those normal things? Unknown procedure directory. All right, let's compile the top one. Not with Gmain. Gmain was a mistake. The DWIM could not create correct goal. Oh. So the problem was actually that I didn't, the problem wasn't generate. The problem was that I didn't link it to whatever other bullshit I needed. Um, directory, calling directory. Where did directory come from? Search. Definitely no G main. A dot out. Oh, directory C colon slash busy beaver data raw busy beaver 522 does not exist. Somebody's a Windows. Directory for import, directory where results get written. One of a raw and then one of results. And then one of trailing slash. Machines. Oh, unknown procedure bound six. Is it bound? You know what I can probably do? Complained about a lot of stuff. Unknown procedure, halt, trans. Well, we tried. Did my download finish? Yes, it did.
Oh, I wrote a file. I wrote a Perl. Great. Okay. Um, we could try to get this code to run, but then this still involves trusting. Uh, so this is the first step in our in our step here. All right, we have our attack steps here. Um, so we can re-implement whatever their search procedure is, and hopefully we get the same number of machines. That would be that would be very satisfying if we could if we could finish step one on part on this part one of stream. Uh, I don't think it's 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 guns up. I think it's cool. Um, but that's probably too ambitious for the first part of the stream because math is really slow. Yeah, it's prologue. But, you know, <laughs> the hard coded Windows path. Um, Okay, so here's kind of what I'm thinking. We probably could have recovered that, but like, what what would have we really ended up with? Here's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, me reading this paper on stream is not that interesting. Uh, so tonight, my homework and your homework is to read this paper. Um, so this paper is called Generating Candidate Busy Beaver Machines or How to Build a Zany Zoo. Uh, the associated code uh, is now in my GitHub. Uh, and tomorrow, we're going to re-implement this in Python. And that's going to be step one. We're, we're going to re-implement something that looks like this in Python. Uh, I'll be on stream uh, probably tomorrow around the same time um i can't like the comments are on my are on my phone but i think this is kind of going to be the new the new style for a bit uh yeah we have a stream schedule right pretty hardcore um if you like this stuff uh please subscribe i'm gonna look at my twitch monies and if i've been making a lot of twitch monies i'm more excited to do this um, if I've been making less Twitch monies, I'm less excited to do this. Uh, and I'm never doing another coronavirus stream. Um, you know, back in the day, you could talk about coronavirus and then idiots took over the discourse. I, I didn't realize. I didn't realize how it changed. Uh, I thought you could... Uh, I don't know. I, I thought I thought over over two months. It seems like anyone who was who was interested in. I saw a joke, and the joke was like, uh, the guy goes up to a doctor, and he's like, "Hey, doctor, when is coronavirus going to be over?" And the doctor's like, "What are you asking me for? Ask a politician." Uh, Corona repost, strong. Thank you for subscribing. Mooch was taken. Moosh, moosh was taken. Oosh. 
Uh, Christian James, thank you for subscribing. Um, only people who pass the test should be allowed in the stream. Yeah, I don't know. We can I can run that over with my content team and my production manager. Oh wait, I don't have any of that shit. Right? Uh, oh good. Yeah, my my AI notebooks is a, is a, is a good repo. That code is pretty clean. Um, get your VIP star. Subscribe today. Let's subscribe. Um, oh, actually, the other thing that I was thinking about is the end of these things always ends up being a Q and A. Um, is there like a? I want kind of like a Reddit style for the questions. You know. Uh, I want. I want like instead of just. Um, I could just make a Reddit. Yeah, I don't like Reddit though. A private Reddit instance. No, no, I don't want there to be. I, I, the reason I don't want there to be a Reddit is I don't want there to be a persistent place. Uh, no, Reddit's are right, but I, I don't want there to be for the same reason that there's no Discord, and I'll be infuriated if anybody makes one is the problem with a persistent place is that place is going to be taken over by by the psychopaths right the if you stand up something quickly everyone is there you know it's just like oh we just showed up the the the, the, the minds of those kind of people haven't yet figured out how to exploit yet what are the jannies People are always talking about this. Oh, the Jannies. Oh, yeah. Uh, just turn it into sub only and let people ask questions at the end. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, all right, let's go sub only. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll answer a few questions, but only for subscribers. That's a good point. That's a good point. They're probably better people. All right. Uh, well, any any, any Q&A for subs? It should be nice to have like a, a nice list of, of questions. Um, you know, like curated and you guys can vote. Yeah, relatively short stream today. But we're gonna try to turn this into this as a, as a math stream. How should someone who never coded start learning to code? See, if you weren't a sub, I brush away that question real fast. Uh, but actually, you know what's a more interesting question? Would you fuck a polar bear? And no, I wouldn't. I mean, would you fuck a normal bear? Like, let's start there. And then, like, would you fuck a dog, right? Like, you know, where, where, does, it, where does it stop, man? You know where it stops? Animals. bother you that Peter Thiel is so popular in startup culture. I didn't even know that was true. And by the way, the how do I learn to code question actually is a worse question than would you fuck the polar bear? And that says a lot for that question. The problem with making a Discord for people who pass a test is who's going to maintain the test? What's going to happen when somebody passes around the guide to pass the test and the thing, right? You got to, moderation's a continual process and I don't get paid enough for it. Uh, why 
as object oriented programming become the standard as opposed to functional programming? Dude, I don't know. Because I mean, it takes forever to do anything in Haskell. Um, <laughs> Lambda man. Uh, yeah, it just takes long to code in, in Haskell. It's going to be the same few questions every time. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's the nice thing about the, ooh, or the hype train. Um, I'd rather be remembered for my, uh, something I haven't done yet. I'm not going to be remembered for that shit. You'll see what I'm remembered for. Um. <laughs> you rather fuck a polar bear and teach it to code. <laughs> um, this shit is funny. Uh, yeah, just pay someone to maintain the test for you. See, you know, a lot of people uh, tell me this kind of stuff. Like, you don't understand, you know, you're rich. You just pay other people to do stuff for you. Yeah, well, paying other people to do stuff for you isn't that easy. Because you run into the same problem of, well, who's competent? How do I judge their competence? Do I have to interview them, right? And eventually, yeah, you could probably build like a structure that's capable of doing this. How many I is 15 people? And, you know, I still have to deal with a lot of this stuff. Well, hopefully less now, we're, we're trying to transition away from it, but it took five years and 15 people, so. Uh, is backprop gonna be obsolete in 20 years? I'm pretty pro backprop. I think backprop's going to continue for a long time. Um, I have yet to see... The brain doesn't use backprop. Uh, at least not the same way. There's no way the brain is backpropping through like 10 layers. Uh, so... Why is there a need to create an elite private community? Wouldn't it be easier to set up some simple chat rules and have mods enforce it? You can't do this because th the problem isn't moderating obvious spam. The problem is somebody's producing content that doesn't violate any of the rules, but it's really low quality. Uh, it's it's a quality problem, not a rules violation problem. And you can't you can have a rule that says, for example, you know, no racist comments, and they're easy to to moderate. But having a rule that says no low quality comments, well, that's subjective. Uh, can we feed GPT-3 a lot of code and get it to code gen? So I had this like idea for Backspace and I kind of wanted to do this. I think what you can get with them is you can build pretty good linters. Um, you can find bugs by finding code that's low. Uh, but people don't, when people, if you watch me code, I don't start at the top and slowly go down to the bottom. Unless you have a system that's capable of like jumping around and editing, I don't think it can code. Yeah, racism is subjective as well today. So even, even a simple rule like that, right? So this, this, this rule thing is completely impossible. Um, low quality content in chat is just a part of the Twitch chat experience. Yeah, Th that... How do we attack low quality stuff period in in the real world there's kind of a social pressure against it right because people have like one identity nobody wants to start being known as oh this is the guy who just you know posts trash um i mean this is probably what i'm going to do next with my life you know math is a fun hobby but um I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna gonna make it as a uh, as a mathematician. Um, it's unclear. That's maybe when you first read Less Wrong and you think about recursive self-improving AIs, 
you think that math is what's going to save the world. Uh, and the more I've grown up, I realize that politics is going to save the world. You've just never been exposed to anything that looks remotely like good politics. Like, most math is good. Most papers that are published, especially in, in uh, weird parts of math, are, are good. Because who cares except people who are really, you know, who really work hard and care. There's no, you don't get any power in exchange for these things. So it only attracts the right kind of people. Um, politics always attracts the worst kind of people. So you've never seen good politics. What does good moderation look like? I think a lot of the internet is, is struggling with this now. Yeah, I wonder. This is this is like what I want to build at the college, right? I think by having a, a a physical space where there is a barrier to entry that you actually have to show up and 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 you know place your body there, uh, already will cut down. Maybe this is why yeah, online learning and online communities can't happen. Your your your. That are, that, well, I'm not saying they can't happen, but until we solve this problem, uh, they'll never be as good as real life communities can be. So, I mean, even that comment, I, I guess Trump is not a good example for good politics. That's not what politics is. If, if the, you hear the word politics and the first thing you think is Trump, you're, you're, that's like hearing the word math and the first thing you, you know, you, you think, eh, it's not, it's not a good analogy. Um, Politics is the way to construct systems that maybe prevent the tragedy of the commons. If you think of anarchy as the absence of politics, uh, you don't, no one wants to live in anarchy. Anarchy is a terrible place to live. Um, politics is what comes in to replace anarchy. Underrated insight on Marx is the key to political change isn't changing the minds of the masses, but changing the minds of the 10 to the 100 bright people for a given age. I, th I think that's right. Um, the masses is downstream. The, the, the belief in the, yeah. Politics, the art, uh, so, there we go. Here, the art or science of government or governing. Um, let's say, forget the especially, let's just leave it at that. The art or science of government or governing. And that's exactly what you're asking the Jannies. That's what they're doing, right? That's what moderation is. That's what building a good community is. Anarchy, yeah, anarchy, uh, which, which, like, white or black is like the absence of color. Anarchy is the absence of politics. Um, I mean, it's not really, actually, you, you are, uh, you're governed then just by the law of nature. It is, it is so completely might makes right. No, but me, it, politics is not the way forward. And maybe we need another word for it because that word is so is so tinged with, with with crap. Um, 
uh, we need a Bitcoin for society. See, that's a good comment. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how literally you meant that. Um, if you mean it literally, as in we just replace society with Bitcoin and everything will be fine, that's not true. But it, the formalization of the system in Bitcoin, if you could figure out how to do that for uh, moderation. Yeah, a system that relies on everybody becoming enlightened. Uh, I don't see. I don't see working so well. Um, but it's yeah. You you want to build a system that has the right sort of. You want to build a system that rewards quality and punishes lack of quality. Let's just say a social network, right? I mean, social networks. What are what are the people? It's governance of a social network. Whatever your policies are. If you could figure out how to build a social network that rewards quality and punishes lack of quality, you'd end up with the most incredible social network so quickly. The problem is what are the exploits, right? So there's two ways to avoid exploits. Um, and this is true in, in security as well. So one way to avoid exploits is to build something that is so incredibly secure. Um, the other way to avoid exploits is to not have something worth taking. Uh, so these are actually, that's all on the same spectrum. If you have a system that costs $100 to attack, but only has $20 of value on it, that system's not gonna be attacked. But if you have a system that has $100, uh, that costs $100 to attack, but has you know, $1,000 of value on it, then that system's gonna be attacked, right? I mean, you, that cost can include everything. That cost can include. Uh, legal risk and all so on and so forth. So the reason um, math seems to remain uh, quality is that there's nothing really of value to take. Uh, math kind of is its own reward. Um, well, yeah, of course, that is that is the ultimate uh, the ultimate problem. Who defines what is quality and what is not? Um, is quality objective? No, it's not. Right? Just it's it's. Well, but even tr no, there's not no objectivity when it comes to people. There certainly is some objectivity. For example, there's no human that can run as fast as a cheetah. That's an objective statement. And it's true. Um. Quality is truth. Yeah, again, th this suffers from this problem of you can say a lot of meaningless true stuff. One component of politics is influencing others towards your ideas. And no, not everybody's into politics. Um, I really, I, I, I hate the idea, uh, but what else do you do when you realize that's, if I could save the world through skateboarding, I'd be a pro skateboarder. If I could save the world through math, I'd be a mathematician. But who's going to end the world? We're humans. See, but, okay, a statement like that means you don't understand what I mean when I say politics. A statement like, the media influences more people than the politics. What's the difference? All of that falls under an umbrella of, of, of like, governance. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of interesting stuff in crypto about this. Um, crypto people, I find just using that word governance, I realize that crypto people talk about this all the time. Um, and, and they talk, yeah. And maybe this is kind of the solution. 
Too bad people thought they were, there was power there and ruined crypto. You have to figure out humans are fundamentally uh, economic creatures. You, you have to figure out how to make sure incentives are aligned for everybody to produce quality. The initial hope of social media was that users would regulate content quality by likes and upvotes. Yeah, I guess. And like, is that that naive? I don't think so. I mean, 10 years ago, I don't think that was naive. Well, maybe, maybe 10, but I, I don't know. 20 years ago, yeah, I don't think it was naive at all. Well, everyone wants a good dictator. Uh, <laughs> the problem is the, the, the good part. Uh, dictatorship suffers from sets of problems that democracy handles. I mean, there are some problems that are better handled in dictatorships and some problems that are better handled in democracies. But this isn't even, I'm talking more about a new politics. I, I'm not talking about, oh, if only we'd elect the Green Party or the Blue Party or the Red Party. No. The, the, the system, the substrate on which they're playing is fundamentally broken. Uh, yeah, the good dictator shit at kid that takes over. I mean, that's, that's the classic problem. Uh, Plato would have hated likes and upvotes. Yeah. Uh, something, something that I really want to... Uh, oh. What? Oh, I'm streaming, but that died. Yeah, who knows? Whatever. Um, Plato's Academy. Apparently, like, Pythagoras found, like, 500 people who wanted to learn math, like, put them up in a building and called it, like, yeah, the Pythagorean... Uh, I forget what he called it, but like, that kind of stuff. Let's, uh, yeah, we could, we could do that again today. Um... Here's the thing about science. Do you believe in science? Well, you don't have to believe in science. People who, you know, don't believe in nuclear physics, they'll get blown up by the bomb. Um, the Sparta of engineering. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea, right? You know, to be... I got. I gotta. I gotta read more of that stuff. Oh, I wish. I wish I could. I wish I could focus more and, and, and read more stuff like that. Maybe the internet is rotting our brains. But everyone's saying that these days, right? Do you think the world will always be full of inequalities? I think it's a stupid thing to focus on. I think instead we should focus on the sum. Some of all the people. The world is not a zero sum game. I'm not trying to change a society. I'm whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not that guy. I'm not trying to change a society. That's not at all what my ambitions are. I am trying to build a new place that is very high quality. I started Kama with the mission of changing culture. Um, sure, it's working pretty well. Am I gonna get to clown the automakers? Am I gonna get to finally laugh at like, you know, Ford's backward ways of doing things? Yeah, it kind of looks like it. But I didn't win. I didn't win in the same way Theranos didn't lose for the right reasons, right? Like th th they won't learn the lesson, so there's, there's no point. Uh, changing a, a society is stupid. How do we build a new society that's good? Should I ban Barack versus Trump guy? I don't care if he's a subscriber. What is a good politician? It's, uh, it's not even... Uh, why are there people? What is a people? Why are there people? Right? I want systems. Hmm. 
Bias.com is quality. It feels good to be a sub. Yeah, it does feel good to be a sub. But non-sub should know how good it feels. Bias.com. What? All right, that's today's Q&A. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, everybody please read the paper. Um, and tomorrow we're going to construct the zany zoo in Python, which will complete step one of our attack. Thank you all for watching. I hope the world becomes a better place. I'm praying to Elwa, 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 um, that the cancer will win. <laughs>